Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this live edition of Hands On with the GraphTech CE6000 Part 2. Um, my name is Jody Edgar. I'm going to be going over just some more advanced features on the GraphTech. Um, we're going to talk about the guarantee tracking, the presets with the media, um, the arms registration, the tangential immunization, things like that. Uh, first, we're going to get started. If you have any questions whatsoever throughout the broadcast, feel free to chat them in. Karen will let me know. I'll answer any questions that you may have. Um, so let's get started. So can we go to the uh, desktop, please? So with this, this is called CADWorks Live. Uh, CADWorks Live is a free online software program through Stalls. Um, it is web-based. You do not have to download it. You can go in here and create vector art, which can be sent over to the vinyl cutter. Uh, first, we're just going to start with like a name and number combo. Send it to the uh, GraphTech vinyl cutter just so you guys can see it running, and then we'll get more advanced on the features of it. So basically, you'll just go up to your text. You're going to create, uh, we'll just go with Smith, which is a known name. Then you'll go through the font. You'll pick which font you, font you want, which varsity font is very popular. So we'll just use the varsity. We'll make the name two inches because the normal name on a back of a jersey is about two inches. So there we have our name. Then we're going to go and we're going to actually create a number. So we'll say Smith's number is 15. The font again, we're going to use a varsity font. And since it's going on the back of the jersey, we'll say it's 10 inches. So here you have your name and number combo. Uh, to center it, you can actually highlight the whole entire design, go up to align and center, and there you have your name and number combo. So basically from this point on, um, you would actually just send it over to the vinyl cutter to be ready to cut. So you're going to hit send to vector cut. Uh, vector cut is actually the, um, the cut driver for CADWorks. So you will have to download that if you do decide to use CADWorks and run your, uh, your cutter from this particular software. It's about three or four clicks uh, to download it. So you're going to open it up. So this screen is, this is your vector cut. So this is your cut driver for your vinyl cutter. As you can tell, we have the name Smith with the number 15. We could rotate in here if you needed to do numerous copies. Um, let's say you need three. You could highlight it. Um, you could rotate it to see which would get you um, the best width so you're not wasting a lot of material. So if you want to rotate it back, here's also where you're going to mirror it because you always want to uh, cut in a mirror image. This is also where you would create the width of your material. So if you have a 15 inch roll of material or a 20 inch roll, over here in the material size, this is where you're going to change that. So if you're cutting 15 inches, and let's say you have 14.75 inches of room to cut, you want to move this over so it goes inside that box. And you would just hit Auto Origin, it's going to take you right in there. So that's basically how the software works with sending over to um, from CADWorks Live with from VectorCut to the GraphTech Cutter. So now what we're going to do, uh, we did create a piece of art. Uh, we can send it to the vinyl cutter. We are going to go over to the GraphTech CE6000 now. And basically, I'm going to show you some of the features about the GraphTech go more in depth through the control panel and show you exactly what you can do. So let's go back to that and we will zoom in on the GraphTech. So this right here, this is the GraphTech CE6000. It is a 24 inch vinyl cutter. It comes with the cutter, the stand, the software is all included when you do make the purchase for this. It also has the blade. Um, for example, this roll of material that I do have in here. This is a 15 inch roll of thermofilm, which is used for decorating 
your sports teams, whether it's football, baseball, basketball. It is a thicker material, so it's durable. Um, so what you would do, you're just going to load it in the back of the vinyl cutter. You're going to feed it through the front. And then you're going to lock it down. So as I explained before in part one of the GraphTech CE6000, you just want to make sure your pin rollers are under the blue knobs so you're reading the width of the machine. Okay, let's zoom in on the uh, control panel. All right. So here you have, it's going to want you to select your roll if it's a sheet. So we're just going to press one. It is a roll. And it's basically what it's doing is reading back and forth to give you the width of the material. So a feature on this, it's actually going to give you what your, how much length you have, or I'm sorry, how much width you have, which is reading 14.49. Now I can move my pinch rollers out a little bit more to extend the material so I'm not wasting a lot of more material. Um, and then this is, as you can tell, I have it preset to say thermofilm. You can actually go into the cutter, uh, the cutting plotter control when you do set your graph tech up and you can actually save the force and the offset and the speed. Um, basically what you would do, you would bring that up and it's going to have on the left hand side eight presets. You can go in there and store your top eight materials, whether it's a decal, indoor vinyl, um, thermofilm, glitter flake, your t-shirt material, they can all be preset in there, which is actually a wonderful tool if you are using numerous materials. At least you'll have that capability of presetting the machine. So every time uh, the person who's actually running your cutter, they don't have to remember the grams of force or the offset. They will already be preset into the machine. Um, and how you would do that, you would basically just go into the edit condition. You're going to rename the media. So if it's, if you want to say fashion film, glitter flake, you would do that all in here. And then you would just hit save. Uh, you can change the force, the speed, the offset, and then once you have all that entered, you're just going to click on the upload setting to cutter, and it's going to go directly to the cutter, as it says in here under Fresh and Film. And to see all the settings, you're going to hit Condition Test. So up here, number one, I have Thermofilm. The tool is your blade. Uh, the speed, you can take it up, down. That's your decision, however fast or slow you want it to cut. And then the gram of force, that is the most important thing when cutting with vinyl. Because basically you don't want to go through the mylar carrier, you just want to cut through the, um, the material. And I see we have a question. We actually have a couple of questions. Okay. Margo would like to know if she can save the file to her computer to cut later. And Matt would like to know if there's a way to change the names from a Mac computer. Yes. So um, you can save the art for later. Was that the question to save the art? Yes. So if you are using CADWorks Live, if you want to go back to the desktop real fast, and I'll show you. So for example, we want to save the Smith 15. We don't want to uh, cut it right now. All you would do, you just go to File, and you're just going to Save As. So we'll just do Name and Number Combo. And then you would name it, uh, you would name it, and then you're just actually basically it's going to save into your software. So later on down the road, if you want to go in and open that back up and cut it, there's your name and number combo. So whether it's now, six months down the road, that will always be there. And then the second question, you want to go back to, let me see here. There we go. The second question was, can you repeat that one more time to me? Is there a way to change the condition names from a Mac computer? Yes, as long as when you install the software, you have your cutter, you're installing everything, yes, you can go in and go under the um, cutting plotter control menu and you can preset everything in there. If that's what you're going to be using, whether it's a Mac or your PC, you can do it. All right, so we did the... Uh, Preset eight medias. If you guys have any other questions, feel free. Just let me know. Uh, so next, we're going to move on to. We did the eight set medias. You can go in there and you can click and save those in there. Uh, we're going to go to the tangential immunization feature. Um, basically, this feature gives you clean cut, smooth uh, designs. 
So it, it helps with like precise cutting. It's basically, it's going to help improve your cut overall. So where that feature is, so you're in your condition test. Here, we'll get on to here. We'll go to condition test, scroll down. The second screen you want to go to is going to, let me go down here. It will say, it says two out of three. So your first one is going to be where all your settings are, your material, your, bl uh, your blade, your speed, your force. The second one is going to be your distance adjustment, the down force, the blade adjustment. And then the second one is going to give you your tangential emulation. So if you click on number two, so how this works, you have a one, a two, and a three. The number one is uh, basically is for like precise cutting, so it's going to give you more of a detailed design. But it does cut a lot slower. But if you have that really intricate design, that's where you want to use number one. Number two, if you just press the number two, what that feature is going to give you on this, it's basically it's just going to improve your cut overall. So if you are cutting and you want to use that feature, you do want to put it at a number two, and you're just going to get a better cut. Um, number three, of course, it's just going to turn it off, and you're not going to use it at all. Um, I use it a lot when cutting thicker material, like glitter flake, 3M, flock, just to give you, because that is a thicker roll of material, so it's just going to give you a more precise cutting. Now, if you're going to do really some really intricate design, um, well, let's say fashion film, because it does have a sticky carrier and you can cut fine detail, that's where the number one would come into place. Uh, so that is how the tangential emulation feature works on there. You do have to turn it on and off. Um, as for the thermofilm cutting, I have it off right now. If I was cutting glitter flake, yes, I would want to turn that on, give it a precise cut. Any questions on the tangential emulation feature? And again, with that, with that feature, you, don't, you do not need it on every job. It's just basically for the more detailed designs if you're going to be cutting those. If you're cutting names, numbers, I wouldn't use it. But if you're getting something at more intricate, that's where that feature does come in handy. Um, a lot of times, if you don't know what tangential emulation is, I can actually explain it to you. So we'll take my hand. So normally on a vinyl cutter, the blade will just drag along the material like this. With the tangential feature, what it actually does, it lifts the blade up and it repositions itself when it's cutting corners, so it does give you a precise cut. So that's what that feature is great for, especially when you're doing rhinestone templates, when you're cutting all those circles. This feature will give you a more accurate cut. Um, next, we're going to, here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, because I'm going to show you, next I'm going to show you something it's called the guaranteed tracking. So let's go back here. Ah, oh, there it is. So the guaranteed tracking on the vinyl cutter uh, is really important if you're doing larger jobs. So when you're cutting, um, let's say you have a job and you need 25 to 30 number ones. Instead of cutting one at a time, that's going to take up too much time. So you can actually go into the software and let's say you need 25 number ones. You can nest them all together and send it to your cutter. But then you don't want your roll of material to move. So I'm going to show you how to do a few ways of how to do guarantee tracking. So first thing you're going to do, you're going to take your roll of material, as I have here, we're going to line it up. And again, you want it to be in between uh, the pinch rollers. Then you're going to lock it down. It is going to go back and forth. It's reading how much width we have. So again, I have 14 point four nine inches of material to cut and as you can tell um, it is on the edge of the machine uh, the edge of the material so what I want to do I want to send let's uh, say a 30 inch job to the cutter but I don't want the material to move or go off balance and ruin that whole sheet of material that I just paid money for so you're going to set your origin that's your starting point that's the cutter knows that's where you want to start cutting so as you're, let me zoom in here so you guys can see here. So when you're starting to scroll, it does have a fat, I mean, you can go slow or you can go fast. And up here, it says X and a Y. You want to check the X out. So uh, basically, it's scrolling out. And up here, if I wanted to do a 30-inch job, you just bring it down. So right now, I am at 31 inches. Here, let me come back here so you can see. I just zoomed it down, 30 
one issue. So I can send that job to this and I know it's safe. It's not going to go off track. Um, the material's not going to move. Um, it's going to stay right in position. So I'm not going to waste that material. <coughs> Excuse me. Now if you wanted to do, let's say, a 40 inch job, again, you just continue to scroll it down until you hit 40 on the control. So that's how you do the guaranteed tracking. The nice thing on the graph tech, you can send larger jobs. The graph tech will do up to a 25 feet job. I personally have never done a 25 feet job, but it can be done. And that's how you would get that guaranteed tracking where it's not going to go off and you know you didn't waste this whole roll of material. So you don't have to stand basically around and babysit your vinyl cutter. You can go do other things. So when you do have the guaranteed tracking and you know this job is ready to be sent, um, just on the control panel, press number two and it's going to take you home. <coughs> Is there any questions on the guarantee tracking? No? All right, so next we're going to move on to the expand feature. Uh, the expand feature is where you can actually cut in front of the pinch rollers. A lot of vinyl cutters do not have this feature. Uh, you have to actually start cutting beside the pinch rollers, which is cause a lot of waste. So I'm going to show you how to do the expand feature. So we have our roll of material. We have it loaded into the vinyl cutter. So with the expand feature, what you want to do is, on the graph tech, that's one of the nice features about it. You can cut be in front of the pinch rollers. You don't have to cut beside them like you do with a lot of like a silhouette or a cameo cutter. So I'm going to show you where that feature is here. Let me zoom in. So you want to go to your pause, your menu key. You want to go to your tool. <laughs> so go to your pause menu key. Your tools will all come up. You have tools, you have arms, you have area, you have media. Go to your area, which is number three. And then you're going to hit your expand, which is number one. And then you're going to move this out. And as you can tell, let me zoom down here a little bit so you can see. Oops. My blade is, uh, my blade is actually in front of the pinch roller. You can't even see the pinch roller. So this is going to start cutting in front. And that's where you would change that, whether you want to take it up, down, if you want to. Like I have mine on 0.32 right now. And basically it's going to cut right in front of the pinch roller. So I'm not going to waste. The least amount of waste, you're going to make more money. I mean, when you're cutting, you don't want to use an inch on each side because that does add up with figuring out your cost. Like, yes, you just bought this five-yard roll, five roll of material, but you're wasting, let's say, not even a half inch on each side. Well, as you go through that five-inch, that five-yard roll of material, that waste is going to add up. So that's where the expand feature will come in handy for cutting on the graph text so you can cut in front of the pinch rollers. All right. Any questions on the expand feature? No questions? Perfect. All right, so next I'm going to show you, let's get into cutting scraps. Everybody has scraps, and we never know what to do with them, so I'm going to show you some scraps that we have laying around in our office. So these are our scrap materials. They get thrown in a bin, and a lot of people throw them away. Well, that's money down the drain, so I'm going to show you how to cut using your scrap material. So when you have a scrap uh, material, we'll go with our right here. We'll go with our silver glitter flakes. So with this scrap piece of uh, material, you're going to load it into. You don't have to feed it through because it's just a scrap. You're going to put it under the pinch rollers. Um, this is where it will come in. Um, you'll have to move the pinch rollers around to lock it down its place so it will read it. So you don't, if you put it over here, and let's say you want to put it over here and you're going to bring this over, when you go to lock that down, it's actually going to read and it's, not, it's going to tell you to load media. So it's not because you're not under the blue line. So you definitely want to make sure you are under the blue lines for the pinch rollers. So I'm going to move it over here a little bit. I'm going to put it under the pinch rollers.
And you want to go to the far edge as possible. Again, use as least amount of waste as possible. Okay, you're going to lock it down. Now, on this screen, it's going to tell you a roll. You don't want to hit a roll because it's not a roll. It is a sheet. It's a, it's a scrap piece of paper. So press number three, and it's going to, uh, what it's going to do is going to read it to give you the measurements of your material and what you'll be able to use. So with this, I have six by ten. So I can take a design in my art and create, let's say you want to cut a few names for two inches. You could probably fit three names on that scrap piece of paper, on a scrap piece of material that you've already used. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is if, let's say you had a smaller piece here. So this, this piece of scrap is a little bit smaller. Again, you're going to load it into your machine. You're going to move your pinch rollers. just to lock it in place and again you want to use sheet it's going to uh, the cutter is going to read back and forth and with this particular piece I have four by seven so I can go into my art create a piece of art put the measurements in four by send it send it uh, four by seven send that design over to the cutter and I just use that scrap piece of material up. And I think we have a question. Donna says she's tried using small scraps on her machine. She's putting them under the pinch rollers, but keeps getting told the load media message as though there was nothing loaded. Do you have any advice for that situation? Well, you can actually cheat the machine. <laughs> that would be my advice. Um, instead of using the number three sheet, tell the machine it's a roll. Um, yes, you're not going to get the exact, but you could take a ruler and measure. So let's say you have a three inch piece of material and the, the graph text not reading that and is giving you that error. Instead of uh, using the sheet, cheat it. Cheat the machine, tell it and it's a roll. You have your ruler, take your ruler, measure right here. So let's say I have five inches and the machine doesn't want to read that go into your settings and you can put five inches in. I mean, the machine thinks it's a roll, but it's actually not, so that's just basically a little, ch little way to cheat the graph tech. Any other questions? Okay, so we did the, um, the scrap pieces of material. We went over the tangential emulation. Uh, we did the guaranteed tracking. We did the, uh, the presets. We did the expand feature. Uh, now we're gonna get a little bit about the uh, the ARMS, the Advanced Registration Mark Censoring System, uh, that comes in handy when you're doing print from like, let's say, um, a printer, but you don't have the capabilities of like, let's say, affording a Versacam before that's, that's actually a print and cut machine. So what this, what this particular machine can do, instead of Having a print and cut system, you can actually have a printer and then you can send that design to this cutter and it will read that registration marks and it will actually cut them out for you. So if you don't have the money to invest in a print and cut system, you can still utilize your vinyl cutter for one of those print jobs. So I'm going to take you over to the control panel and walk you through how to change the arms. So let's zoom in here. There we go. I love cameras. <laughs> okay, we got it. So with the um, automated registration mark, uh, basically it's a function that scans the registration marks on the media using sensors. So when you're cutting with the outlines that are printed, um, that's where the automated registration mark detection does come in handy. So how we get to that feature is go to your menu button. N number one is your tools. Number two is your arms. So in here, uh, this is all for automated registration mark sensors. So you can pre-read them. You can manually read them. You can mark the scans. You can mark the distance. So if you had, if you wanted to only cut an inch, let's say you have that print 
uh, that print design and you want it to be an inch, you can go into this and tell it. I only want, I wanted to cut an inch over the print area. You can also speed it up. You can test it to make sure that it is actually testing. You can test cut it. So if you have a design, let's say Columbia, and you want to cut around it, test it. Make sure it's going to work before you send that job to the cutter. You can turn the sensors off. You can adjust it. Um, like I said, you can also do all kinds of scans. So there's a lot of different features with the automated registration marks and detection in the actual GraphTech cutter. So again, you don't have to have a print and cut system to do full color designs. You can print it, send it to the graph tech, it will read your registration marks that you have created in the software and it will cut around that design, which is one of the nice, and that's one of the nice features about the graph tech vinyl cutter. So not only do you have the automated registration, you have the tangential emulation, which is very important for cutting precise uh, detailed designs. You have the guaranteed tracking. The presets on the vinyl cutter is my personal favorite when it comes to the graph tech. Everyone knows there's so many different medias out there. Instead of remembering all the grams of force, preset them. You know what your top materials are. You have eight different materials that you can actually preset. Do your top five. It's going to save you time in production. Because one, you're not going to have to be referred, oh, I'm using glitter flake, what's the gram of force? It's preset into the machine. Plus, it makes it easier on the person who's actually running the cutter instead of them remembering, oh, I need to cut five of these glitter flakes, I need three of these thermofilms, I need two decals. That's a lot of um, different materials and a lot of different forces to remember. Go in and preset it. Set that cutter up for That's what it's there for. Um, the expand feature is wonderful because it actually lets you cut um, in front of the pinch rollers. A lot of vinyl cutters do not do that. You have to, the pinch rollers are lined up, you have to cut beside them. So with this expand feature, it helps you cut in front of the pinch rollers so you're not wasting as much material. You're not throwing money down the drain. Um, the cutting scraps is, my, is also something that I like. We cut a lot of designs here at Stalls. We always have scrap material left over. Utilize those scraps. Somebody comes in, they want a two inch name, they want a three by three logo. You have the material, you have the machine that is able to cut that to give them that personalization, use it. Somebody comes in, you already decorated their shirt, let's say they want a, their number on their cleats for baseball. Use the scraps, add it on there. Somebody comes in, they want a little flyer, flower on their book bag. Use your, utilize your scraps. That's what they're there for. Um, the automated registration mark detection is something that printers, uh, people who are printing, they actually love that feature because they don't have to invest that six, seven thousand dollars in a print and cut system where they have, as long as they have like an inkjet printer, they can print that design out, send it to the graph tech. The graph tech will read those registration marks and it'll cut around your design. So we're going to go back here. Is there any questions, Karen? No? Um, we did go over a lot of the more, a uh, lot of the features. There are other features of the GraphTech that I covered actually in the first part of the GraphTech CE6000, like loading the blade. A lot of people have trouble, so we do have some time left over, so we'll just uh, go through that as well. So you have your blade. A lot of uh, people, they let the blade stick out too much. So it's really important to let your blade only stick out about a half credit card thickness. A lot of people, they will let their blade hang out and it's cutting through and it's damaging their cutting strip. So it's more of a user error than an actual, the cutter problem. So just make sure your blade's sticking out about a half credit card thickness. And do make sure you do a test cut. Every time you are loading a new piece of media into your vinyl cutter, Please, do a test cut. Make sure so you're not wasting that whole entire roll of material that you just paid money for. The test cut feature. Use it. And how to do a test cut? What you do, you go to condition test. Let me see, can I see? Yes. 
So in the machine, that scrap piece of paper I have, the scrap piece of material I have is glitter flake. So I actually have glitter flake stored into the vinyl cutter. I'm going to press my number one, and I'm going to go find my glitter flake. My glitter flake is under number six. I'm going to press enter. So right now I'm cutting at 180 grams of force. So I'm just going to do a test cut on the force, and I want to see if it's deep enough. So I'm cutting it at 180. So the middle one would be your 180. The first one would be 170. And then the last one would be 160. And as you can tell, I don't know if you can see, but here, I'll zoom in real fast. Let's bring it down. Here, we'll just go right here. It did not cut through to carry. It just cut through the material. So I have it set up. I'm ready to send a job to the scrap piece. So that's how important the test cut is. So you're not wasting that roll of material that you just spent money on. Um, another thing that's really important with the uh, graph tech, you can speed it up, you can slow it down. I normally keep it on 20, 25 to 35. Um, if you do need to speed it up, you can. And I'll zoom in and show you the, how to speed it up. So you would go to your number three. And right now I have glitter flake cutting at a 25. If I wanted to, I can take it up to 64. So that's 64 uh, inches per second is cutting, which is really fast. I wouldn't want to do that with glitter flake because it is a thicker material, so you might not get an accurate cut. Now, if you were just cutting a bunch of circles, that's where I might want to speed that up. If you're doing a large job, like four inch numbers, Speed it up. Um, let's see here. We'll get on here. Another thing is there are two different types of blades. So you have a 45 and you have a 60 degree blade. Let me scroll down here. So when you buy the Graph Tech vinyl cutter, it does come with a 45 degree blade. Um, what I recommend, we make two different types of blade holders. There's a red one and a blue one. My blue one is, I know, it's a 45 degree blade. I have a red one that is a 60 degree blade. The 60 degree blade would come in hand if you are doing more intricate designs, like if you're cutting the glitter flake and you have really small details, use that 60 degree blade. It gives you an anger, it's going to give you more of a precise cut. Plus, you can use your tangential emulation feature as well. Karen, is there any other questions? No questions? Um, let's see here, another feature on the Graph Tech that we have, so we did the speed, we did the grams of force, we went through the tangential emulation feature, we also, the overcut feature. So the overcut feature is if you are doing rhinestone templates, I'll scroll up and show you where the overcut feature is. So if you go to your condition test, scroll down. So right below the tangential emulation feature, it says overcut. So overcuts where you, if you are doing rhinestone templates and let's say you have a circle, well, you want that precise circle. You don't want to sit there and weave 300 circles for rhinestones. This is where the overcut feature will come in hand. It will actually cut over a little bit on that circle. So you'll get a more precise cut and the circle is complete. So we're going to... Any other questions on any other features on the Graph Tech? Does anyone who has a Graph Tech, are you having trouble with anything? You need me to ex help you, ex I can explain it to you, take you to that feature, show you how to do it. No questions? Perfect. All right, so we're going to zoom out back to me. So we only have a few minutes left. I do want to thank you for taking the time to spend this morning with me on the GraphTech CE6000. Um, we did do a part one last month. Uh, it is actually on stallstv.com. You're more than welcome to watch the video as well. This will also be uploaded uh, within a few days. Um, at the end of the class, if you could please fill out the survey. Uh, the surveys are really important because we get to hear from you, our customers. We get to understand what you want us to teach you. You bought all this equipment. You're using our materials.
you're having trouble, let us teach you how to use it. That's what we have the Stalls TV Studios for. So at the end of this class, if you will please fill out a survey, let us know what you're interested in. We can put us we can put a class together where you can sit here and watch us do it. Um, I do want to again thank you for your time, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.